wife and two weeks later you lose your job. And now you're complaining about it. Now you're questioning God of all about it. But God knew if you never lost that job, you would never go to the next one. Mm -hmm. Amen. God knew you would stay contented in that same spot unless He shook things up a little bit. Unless He allowed some things to go wrong that would maneuver you into the place where He was calling you so He could take you to the next level of blessing. To the next place of increase. Listen to me today. If you're in here today and you desire anointing, please understand that anointing does not come easy. Amen. Anointing does not come without a price. Mm -hmm. Amen. Uh, anointing, and if you understand that the anointing oil comes from an olive, but, but the olive does not produce the oil until the olive oil, or the olive itself, is squeezed. And it's then that the oil begins to spring forth from the olive. Mm -hmm. And if God never allowed any of us to be squeezed, I know my life, if God never allowed me to be squeezed, there's a lot of things that I would never have learned. Amen. My character would be completely different than what my character is today. Come on. Amen. I would be less loving. I would be less forgiving. Good preaching. Had God not allowed me to be squeezed, had, not I, had I not went through some fiery furnaces of affliction where the only thing I could do, to, knew to do, the only thing I possibly could do was just trust God. But through it all, God was working. And I, I need to tell somebody today that just because you don't see Him working doesn't mean He's not working. Amen. And when it seems like everything's going wrong and you think God has forsaken you, it might really be God just sending the answer to your prayer tell it. and say, okay, let me take you there then. But in order to get there, you've got to go through this. Amen? Amen. That's good preaching tonight. I want to talk about this Amen. now just very quickly. Another way that we collect dust, another way that dust gets on us, is from facing the fierce winds and the storms that we go through. When the winds are pushing against our lives, when the winds are pushing against our vessels, blowing against us, trying to make it difficult. We're trying to move, but the wind is blowing dirt and dust all over us, and it's easy to get dirty when you're facing the storms. It's easy to get dust all over you when you're facing a test, when you're facing a trial. But nevertheless, God still says to us, Arise, Shake off the dust from you. Some of us have dust still hanging on us from trials that we've been through. Amen. Amen. Some of us still have dust hanging on to us from the storms that we fought in another day. And the dust is still there. And the hurt is still there. And the pain is still there. And it still seems so real to us as though it just happened. Because we can still feel the dust hitting against our skin. Yes, as the wind gave it so much power and it just covered us. But God says, shake off Come on. that Amen. dust. Amen. Shake it off. Because God has taken you to another place. Hallelujah. When the winds blow against us and the dust collects upon us, we cannot let it stop us. Isn't it funny today? That as we take a look in our world, the most precious things and the most valuable things that are upon the face of the earth today come from the dust mm -hmm. and come from the dirt. Mm -hmm. Amen. Places where you got to dig down and get dirty in order to get it. You want some gold? you got to dig for it. You want some diamonds? Well, sometimes it's covered in a lot of dust and sometimes it's covered in a lot of dirt. And it's not until the dust is removed off of it and the mud is all cleaned off of it that you see something that is there of great value. And a lot of times God allows dust to collect upon us and a lot of things to come as we go through these storms. But as He cleans it all off of us and polishes us off, Amen. He says, you see, Praise I God. formed a beautiful diamond. You see, I brought you Amen. through the furnace Amen. and now I brought Praise you out God. as pure gold. Praise the Lord. 
I want to close with this thought. I didn't preach this thing half as good as I wanted to today, but I might try it again on Sunday. <laughs> you've heard me talk recently, and I'm sure you've heard it in church over the years, that God is a God of principle, and the, one of the principles of the kingdom of God is to sow and to reap. How many know that that's Amen. the truth? Amen. It's the truth. To plant if you want to get something, sow something. If you want to get, give. Mm -hmm. Give and it shall be given unto you. Press down, shaken together, running. and running over. Praise God. The Bible said, Man will pour into your bosom, but it started off with giving. The laws of sowing and reaping. Well, you know, in my life I've considered a lot of things as seed, and I believe pretty much everything is a type of seed. Mm -hmm. Amen. I considered money as a seed, and indeed money is a type of seed. Yes, amen. Ultimately, the Word of God is the seed. <laughs> Money is a type of seed, and uh, you know thoughts are seeds, and uh, words yes, are yes, seeds, yes, and yes, all, all kinds of things are seeds in our life. But mm -hmm. I don't know how much time I, I really consider it myself as a seed. Come on now. Myself as a seed. That as I pray to God to take me to a greater depth, as I pray for God to bring increase in my life, there's times when God says, if you really want me to do this for you, I'm going to have to plant you. Mm -hmm. And if you know anything about planting, and I know very little, but I do know this, that in order to get anything, you've got to put the seed into the soil. Amen. You've got to cover it with some earth. You've got to cover it with some dirt. You've got to cover it with some dust. You take that little seed or whatever it is you want, you put it down there deep, and you cover it up again. And I just want to read this to you now out of Mark chapter number 4. Go with me in your Bibles to Mark chapter 4. I'll close with this thought. Mark 4 and 26. Four and twenty-six. And he said, So is the kingdom of God as if a man should cast seed into the ground, and should sleep and arise night and day. And the seed should spring and grow up. I like this. He knoweth not how. For the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself, first the blade, then the ear. After that the full corn in the ear but when the fruit is brought forth immediately, he puts in the sickle because the harvest has come. He's likened this unto the kingdom of God as if a man would cast seed into the ground. He would take a seed, he would plant it, he would cover it with soil. He knoweth not how, but somehow that little seed makes its way out of all of the dirt out of all of the dust begins to rise into a flower begins to rise into a tree begins to rise into a, a, a vegetable or whatever it is that was planted what started off with a seed and as I said I consider all these other things as seed but I don't know how much thought I've given to the fact that God plants me as a seed and when it's time for me to grow he takes me and He plants me. And He covers me with a whole lot of stuff. And it seems like it's all dirt. And it seems like it's all dust. And it seems like it's all pressure. And it seems like it's all stress. And it seems like it's all frustration. And it seems like it's all adversity. And I'm wondering, God, why did you put all of this stuff on top of me? But I know this, that well, the seed is in the ground, Somehow the water has a way of getting to it, even when it's under the soil. Amen. And even when it's buried out of sight, Amen. somehow the sun is able to send life through the dirt, 
through the dust, through the soil, and cause the seed to grow. And isn't it the truth today that even when we're in our adversities and in our struggles, God still sends water to give us life. He still causes the sun to shine even in the midst of our darkness, causing us to begin to go from seed form.